Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the size of cells. You should then be able to use the prefixes centi, milli, micro and nano. Now I should point out that this material may seem quite tricky. You might need to watch this video a couple of times to get the ideas. In the last video we started looking at cells. We looked at the similarities and differences between eukaryotic cells such as animal and plant cells and prokaryotic cells such as bacteria. One of the key differences is that prokaryotic cells are much smaller than eukaryotic cells. In this video we're going to look at the sizes of cells, so let's get started. All sizes in science are based on the meter, but the problem is that objects in biology are often much smaller than that. Let's look at some examples. I'm showing you here a German Shepherd, and the average length of a dog like this is around one meter. Now if we divide one meter into 100 equal parts, then we've got one centimeter. The word centi means one hundredth, so one centimeter is one hundredth of a meter. Now scientists often use standard form, and you could be expected to use that in your exams. One centimeter is one times ten to the power of minus two meters. Just to give you an idea of the size of that, the width of your little finger is around one centimeter. Now again, in biology, one centimeter is large. If we divide one centimeter into ten equal parts, then we've got one millimeter. So one centimeter is ten millimeters. Again, just to give you an idea of that, the tip of a ballpoint pen is around one millimeter. Now the word milli means one thousandth, so one millimeter means one thousandth of a meter. And again, using standard form, one millimeter is one times ten to the power of minus three meters. Going back to the dog, we can see that this is one thousand millimeters long, in other words, one meter. Now again, in biology, one millimeter is pretty big, so scientists work with even smaller sizes. If we take a meter and divide this into one million equal parts, then we've got a micrometer. The word micro means one millionth. So one micrometer is one millionth of a meter. A micrometer has this symbol, and I'd recommend that you learn that. In standard form, one micrometer is one times ten to the power of minus six meters. Now a typical human cell, such as this one, is around ten to twenty micrometers in size. That means that biologists find a micrometer a very useful unit, especially when looking at cells. Now cells contain smaller parts such as ribosomes, and we're going to look at those in a later video. This means that we need an even smaller unit to talk about the sizes of objects inside cells. So the final unit we're going to look at is called the nanometer. The word nano means one billionth, so one nanometer is one billionth of a meter. In standard form, a nanometer is one times ten to the power of minus nine meters. Now I should point out that a nanometer is a very small size. Proteins in cells are measured using nanometers. This shows the protein haemoglobin, which is found in red blood cells. A molecule of haemoglobin is around 5 nanometers in diameter. Remember you'll find plenty of questions on the size of cells in my vision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above. Ok, so hopefully now you should be able to describe the size of cells. You should then be able to use the prefixes centi, milli, micro and nano.